Hello everybody, my name is Glenn, I'm with Strata and this is our exercise for knee health guide. Today we're gonna to be talking about that magnificent joint that is below your hip and we're gonna talk about some exercises that you can do even if you're in pain and discomfort right now to start strengthening your knees so you can go back to doing all the stuff that you miss doing. So what we're gonna to do today is explore a little bit of knee anatomy to help make sense of the exercises and how to do them. And then we're gonna actually go through some progressions about how you can improve the exercises over time and keep challenging yourself. And then finally, I'll actually show you a whole bunch of exercises that you can do at home today to help improve the health and function of your knee. Why the heck do I need to know about knee anatomy? The reason to know about knee anatomy is most people don't understand how complex this knee is. Most people think that it extends like you're kicking a soccer ball or that it bends, like you're trying to pull your heel towards your butt. But there's a lot of different muscles and this joint can actually move in a couple more different positions than that. And when you understand how the joint works and the anatomy, you can better create exercises for yourself that are gonna help you progress to where you wanna be. So I talk about anatomy today, it's gonna to be a little bit more easier to understand, a little bit more simple. If you're looking for an in-depth anatomy guide, this isn't it, but I do wanna have you understand a little bit more about how this thing works. So we've got some bones here. We've got our femur, which is our thigh bone. We've got our tibia, which is our shin bone. We've got the patella or the kneecap, which kind of sits in between the two. And then we have one more bone, maybe not technically knee, but the fibula, which sits right beside that shin bone. So most people are familiar with the quadriceps muscles, or the quads for short. Three of those muscles come off the thigh bone here, they cross the kneecap, and they attach into the top of your shin bone. One of them actually, I don't know if you can see it or not, attaches into your hip, and it crosses the hip, crosses the knee joint, and attaches in with the rest of those quad muscles. So on the opposite back side here, most of our hamstring muscles, the ones that are gonna curl the knee, believe it or not, they actually attach from the bottom here of the ischium or the bottom of your pelvis. And what they do is they cross this thigh bone and then certain different places in the back of your knee joint, right here on your shin bone. We have a small handful of those knee curl muscles, those knee flexors that actually attach from just the bottom of your thigh bone here to the back of that shin bone. Now, there's one more big muscle that actually helps you move and flex your knee, which is actually going to be your gastrocnemius. You might be familiar with this as that kind of heart-shaped muscle, the upside down one, on the back of your shin bone. If you're standing on your toes, it'd be very pronounced. That muscle actually attaches from your heel, but it actually goes into the back of this thigh bone here. So it does a really great job actually curling your knee joint. Now there are more small muscles that cross the knee and attach into the hip and into the heel that affect the knee, but those are kind of the big ones that you might be familiar with. So here is the big thing that I want you to notice is that a lot of these muscles that directly impact the knee and help you move actually attach either at that ankle joint or in the hip joint, which means that, and this is beautiful, if you get your hip stronger or you get that ankle joint stronger, you're directly going to be impacting positively the health of your knee and vice versa. If you get your knee stronger, it can actually have a tremendous impact on the way your ankle feels and the way your hip feels. How cool is that? Now where these muscles start and end, where they attach into the body, is actually also going to affect how well your shin bone rotates in and rotates out. And a lot of these same muscles that attach either from the hip or the ankle or directly from the thigh bone or the shin bone actually are gonna impact how well this thing can shift and turn. And so now I hope you're beginning to see how beautifully complex this joint is. So what you're gonna to notice today is that there's some exercises that you feel might actually be working your hip, might actually be working your ankle, in addition to working parts of your knee joint. And that's all by design, because if we can get everything here stronger, your knee's gonna end up feeling a whole bunch better. That's it for my knee anatomy lesson. Let's talk about some of the exercise and progressions we're gonna to use to start challenging this knee. So the kind of exercise that we're going to be using today to challenge your knee, your hip, and your ankle are going to be what's called isometric exercises. It's just a fancy word for holding positions, challenging yourself without any actual movement happening. The 
good news is, is that by strengthening your muscles, you can really help with some of the discomfort that you feel in these areas. Because what the muscles do is absorb force, essentially help you protect your knee, if you get those muscles stronger, when you're out doing your activities, you're going to be able to rely on the muscles to do more work than some other parts of the joint. And that's gonna end up having you feel a lot better. You're gonna stress out those areas way less and you'll be able to do what you love for longer and you'll start seeing some of that pain and discomfort start to decrease. So let's talk about the exercises now. One of the reasons I love exercise, I think it's the best way to help people with pain and discomfort get out of it, is because you can actually progress exercise. You can do exercise for longer, you can add more load or resistance or weight, you can do more of it or you can do less of it, whatever your body needs. You can't really do that with some passive modalities like stretching or foam rolling. So here are the guidelines for when you do the exercises. What I want you to do is to set up the exercise and get into the position, and I want you to try to hold it as hard as you can, but without feeling pain and discomfort. If you feel maybe a little bit of irritation, that's okay. But if that irritation gets above a one or a two out of 10, it's time to stop and pick a different exercise. When it comes to how long should I be holding some of these exercises for? The answer is, if it's your first time, probably take it to about a 3.5 out of five. Maybe there's a little bit of burn or a little bit of strain, but stop there. If you feel comfortable progressing, try hold it so you get a four out of five, where there's some strain and definitely feels more discomforting. And then if you feel good and there's no pain, you can hold it to a 4.5 or even really close to a five, which is you're doing it and it feels like there's a lot of strain, it's really hard and you're almost completely tired, but you're not quite there just yet. So the short of the long is, if you're unfamiliar with these exercises and there's a little bit of discomfort and it feels tiring, go for a shorter period of time. If you feel like you've got the endurance to do it, you've got the strength to do it, it's not really bothering you and you can challenge yourself really, really hard and you're not feeling really bad or scared or nervous about it, you can go for longer, closer to what would be almost complete failure, like you can't hold it for any more than another second or two. The best place to start, just do one, maybe two rounds to begin with. And if that feels good, next time you can just do two rounds. And if you feel like that's fine and you can challenge yourself more, you can progress to doing three rounds of each exercise. So in summary, here are the big three rules to remember. If it hurts, stop. The second one, challenge yourself as much as you can without pain and discomfort. Three, try to do a little bit more next time. So, without further ado, let's get into the exercises. Here are the exercises that you will be doing as a part of this guide. Please, feel free to pause the video and stop it at any time if you'd like. We do suggest watching this video as you do the exercises so that you can always go back and refer to the tips and to the advice we give you throughout each exercise. For this knee extension exercise, simply line your back in a comfortable position. Think about locking and straightening your knees as hard as you can without causing yourself any discomfort. For the lying hip abduction, you can keep your non-working leg either straight or bend the knee and put the foot on the table. For the working leg, lock your knee out, keep it nice and tight, keep that leg locked out and bring the leg out as far as you can to the side and keep pushing out and holding. Alternatively, if you have a band and you want to make it a little bit harder, place that band around your ankles, your shins, or just below your knees. Lie on your back and bring your leg out to the side. Note that the opposite leg, the non-working one in quotations, is actually still helping you in this one to be nice and stable, so make sure you leave a little bit of time between left and right legs. For this hip adduction exercise, you will need a pillow or a yoga block or something else you can push into. Place the yoga block either between your feet or just between your knees. Lock out your knees and try to shove your legs together as hard as you can without pain. Keep the same object that you had for the previous exercise. Place it between your feet. With your knees slightly bent and your feet touching the ground, think about rotating 
your feet and toes in so they push into the object. Hold this position. Nothing to push into or just feeling comfortable having something between your feet, no problem. Just do it without the implement. Think about turning your feet together. This next one isn't for everyone, so if it feels uncomfortable, don't do it. Bend your knees and place your heels on the ground. Push through your heels and extend through your hips, pushing your pelvis up to the ceiling. Note that we're not trying to extend our lower back, we're trying to push through our heels so our hips come up. This one's a little harder, so follow along. Bend your knee and put your heel on the ground. Start pulling the heel towards your sit bones. You should feel some work and muscles contracting in your hamstrings or the back of your thigh. Hold this position. Lying face down, keep your leg straight and bring it up off the ground. We're not trying to bring up our leg as high as possible as to use our lower back, but we're trying to extend the leg up off the ground so we feel the muscles working in the hip. For this last exercise, you're lying face down and you're curling your knees so that your heels come towards your hips. You can, if you need to, point your toes down, point your toes up, get in whatever position you feel most comfortable to complete this exercise and do the hold. Now honestly, we could create hundreds of different exercises to challenge your knee. And we would accomplish this by changing the position of the hip, changing the position of the knee, changing the position of the ankle, changing how we're pushing into the ground or into the air or side to side. There are so many different things that we can change that we can create all these different ways of challenging and exercising your knee. And that's why our approach here at Strata works so well is because we're really good at figuring out where in your body the greatest deficits are in strength and endurance, helping create exercises that are tailored for you so that you can improve these areas really, really quickly. And by improving them really, really quickly, your body's gonna start feeling better a lot sooner. So with all that said, please feel free to try to create your own exercise and challenge these muscles in different ways so that you have a very robust muscular system. Everybody, my name's Glenn. I'm here on behalf of Strata. We just want you moving and exercising pain-free. We really hope this knee guide helps you out, starts you on the right path of getting stronger. If you ever want any help with your knee or you have any questions, please let us know. We're always happy to help. Everybody, once again, my name's Glenn. I'm with Strata. I want you to have a very wonderful day. Keep moving and exercising and do your best to make it pain-free.